Sidra and you are watching Ask Your Pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the good cholesterol, why it's so important for our body, and how you can boost it naturally. So stay tuned! So before we get into the topic, you first need to understand what's cholesterol. Cholesterol is a waxy, fat-light substance which is found in all the cells in your body. Your liver makes cholesterol and it's also found in some of the foods such as your meat, dairy products, poultry. So your body basically needs some of the cholesterol to work properly. But having too much of the cholesterol in your body or the bloodstream is basically going to raise the risk of coronary artery disease. So you really want the cholesterol in moderation, not too high, not too low, right? Now, the cholesterol travels through the blood on proteins, which are called lipoproteins. And there are two types of lipoproteins that c carry cholesterol throughout the body. And they are low density lipoproteins, uh, which are LDL, and also known as the bad cholesterol. And the other one is the high density lipoprotein HDL, which is also known as the good cholesterol. Now, today we are basically just going to talk about the good cholesterol, but I do want to let you know a little bit about the LDL, which that why it's considered bad cholesterol, because what happens is the high levels of it can lead to the buildup of cholesterol in your arteries which can cause strokes. So we don't want that high level build up in the arteries and cause heart problems or stroke. Now, while on the other hand, what HDL does is that it's carried, uh, you know, from all of the body back into your liver and your liver then actually removes that extra cholesterol from the body. So the high levels of HDL cholesterol can actually lower your risk of heart disease and stroke. So in this video, let's find out how you can raise those levels of good cholesterol. But I do want to, uh, you know, let you know how you can find out your HDL levels and what are the normal ranges so you understand all of this process before you can figure out how you can boost your levels of HDL. Now, in order to find out what are your blood levels of HDL, you simply get a blood test. And when and how often you should get this blood test really depends on your age, uh, several risk factors, uh, family and also family history. But the general recommendations are that for people who are 19 years or younger, their first uh, HDL test should be done between the ages of 9 to 11. And here's the thing, the children can have their HDL test done every five years. And some children may have this test, uh, you know, started as early as at the age of two years. It's because if they have a family history of high blood cholesterol, heart attack or stroke, but if overall the child is healthy and there's no bad family history, then the first test can be done at the between the ages of nine and 12. Now, for people who are aged 20 and older, uh, their test should be done every five years, okay? So men who are 45 to 65 and women who are 55 to 65 should have their test done every one to two years because those age ranges, those groups of people are at higher risks of high cholesterol. And how high the number of your HDL really depends on your age and sex. A generalized range is 40 to 50 milligrams per deciliter. But here on the screen, I have the specific range uh, based on your age and gender. Um, now on the screen, you can see that if you are 19 or younger, your HDL level should be 45 and over. For men who are 20 years and over, this range should be uh, more than 40. And for women 20 years and over, it should be more than 50. Now, the question is how you can raise your HDL levels. Now, the question is how some people have the HDL level lower compared to other healthy individuals. 
Now, in general, people who have metabolic syndrome, which is like a cluster of conditions that include obesity, high blood pressure, uh, high sugar levels, uh, in general, such people, you know, may have lower HDL levels. So, how these people can increase the HDL level is the question. In general, you know, these uh, people are recommended to make lifestyle changes like exercise. And you know, a lot of times we take exercise very light, but do you know that just walking for 60 minutes a day can help increase your HDL level quite significantly. So definitely incorporate that into your daily routine because that's literally an easy way to increase your level. Another thing is that if you're a smoker, then definitely, you know, um, you know what I'm going to say, you want to eliminate the root cause, you want to quit smoking. And the third thing is that you want to maintain healthy weight because that not just helps with the um, HDL levels, but that also avoids any obesity, which is associated with certain health conditions. See, diet really plays a vital role in increasing your um, HDL levels. It's because when we eat fatty food that basically in the body is transformed into cholesterol and some of them, you know, changes into good cholesterol and some of them changes into bad cholesterol. It really depends on the kind of food that we are intaking, right? So if you are, uh, you know, wanting to increase your HDL, then you need to eat good fats instead of bad fats because bad fats are going to, uh, you know, promote your bad cholesterol, which is the LDL. We don't want that to happen, right? So what you want to do is you want to limit the saturated fats, which include your full fat milk, cheese, any high fat meats like sausage and bacon. Um, I know bacon sounds so tempting, but you want to limit that if you have high cholesterol. And also you want to limit the foods which are made with butter, lard and shortening. You should also avoid trans fats, uh, which may be in some of the margarines, fried food and processed foods like baked goods. You also want to limit some of the carbohydrates especially you know sugar now i know all of this sounds so tempting and you know you can't really quit all of this but what i'm recommending is that eat all of this in moderation eat these bad foods or bad you know fats in moderation and increase the intake of the foods which are healthier which are rich in unsaturated fats that way that increase in level can combat the bad uh, fats that you are intaking right now what i mean by that is you want to increase the unsaturated fats for example maybe intake a lot of avocado vegetable oil like olive oils and nuts um and avocado by the way is actually an excellent source of mono unsaturated fatty acids this is actually a healthier type of fat which can boost your hdl level and lowers the ldl level and um, here's an interesting thing that in 2015 there was a study conducted and according to that study eating one avocado a day you know, while following a moderate fat diet was associated with a drop of your bad cholesterol, which is pretty amazing, right? And if you're looking for healthy fat, then another thing you can do is incorporate olive oil into your diet. Like instead of using canola oil, use olive oil. Um, when you are, you know, cooking, maybe use like an extra virgin olive oil instead of fats or butter. But just remember, you have to cook the extra virgin olive oil at lower temperatures since the high temperature can break down that extra virgin olive oil, right? So, you know, just to be on safe side, you can use this extra virgin olive oil for salad dressing, uh, maybe uh, sauces or just to flavor food once you have cooked them. But just, uh, you know, be sure to use extra virgin olive oil in moderation because it's kind of high in calories. But since you can't really uh, cook olive oil, the extra virgin olive oil at high temperature, I personally use the avocado oil. It tastes so good almost like your regular oil 
and it's so much healthier and it's a great alternative if you don't want to use the olive oil or if you are you know uh, used to of cooking at high temperature which i love cooking curries and they have to be cooked at high temperature so avocado oil for me is like an everyday thing in my kitchen another thing is that you want to eat beans and legumes that include your lentils your black beans chickpeas they're all like great source of uh, cholesterol friendly soluble fiber they all taste well and are definitely healthier option if you're trying to control your cholesterol level well we've all heard that an apple a day and you know the rest right but hey it might be just true because this crunchy fruit is a top source of pectin which can actually lower your ldl uh, cholesterol to improve your ldl to hdl ratio right so if it's lowering of course your ldl level then definitely your hdl level will be rising up so this fruit is definitely going to help maintain that ldl to hdl ratio and also apples are loaded with polyphenols actually according to a study conducted in 2013 these polyphenols can keep your arteries from being clogged or inflamed uh, by stopping the ldl cholesterol from oxidizing so when it comes to fruits and vegetables an easy way to remember is that you want to consume your purple fruits and vegetables because the studies showed that uh, fruits using anthocyanin extracts have shown that they help fight uh, inflammation and protect the cells from damaging uh, free radicals and potentially you know they can also raise the high cholesterol so consume your purple uh, fruits and vegetables that includes your eggplant your red cabbage your blueberries blackberries these berries are actually also so good when you are trying to lose weight or when you're uh, you know diabetic or in this case if you have a cholesterol issues now in terms of your protein source uh, i told you earlier that you want to stay away from your high fat protein sources like bacon uh, but instead you want to eat fatty fish like uh, salmon and tuna because the uh, omega-3 fats in the fatty fish provides benefits uh, uh, to heart health and they also help in the reduction of, um, of the inflammation and better functioning of the cells that uh, kind of line the artery. I know the word carbs are always associated with a bad repute but that's when we are talking about refined carbs. There are healthy carbs that you definitely want to eat like your whole grains. In fact, the whole grains have have been um, you know considered as the number one food for better heart health um, and really there are um, and similar to beans and legumes whole grains are packed with soluble fiber and vitamins that help your body clear any excess LDL cholesterol and it also helps improve your HDL to LDL ratio now you really you can boost your intake of your um, HDL by swapping a whole grain bread to a whole grain grain pasta instead of you know white bread or uh, refined grain pasta I actually get the whole grain legume pasta and it I know it doesn't taste quite as the regular pasta because but hey it gets the job done I mean um, in the beginning it did take me some time to get used to of the whole grain pasta but now I am totally like into it and this is really my healthy balanced meal. Uh, you can also you know pair your uh, pasta with brown rice or quinoa or you know you can also have barley with a maybe a stir fry salad but really try eating like quinoa with your veggies and you know you don't have to make these healthy foods boring like the way I cook my quinoa is the exact same way I cook my fried rice or I cook my regular rice dish so I add a lot of veggies in it and a little bit of avocado oil and kind of stir fry everything just I like my food really well seasoned so that really does the trick for me 
because then I don't have to feel that I am eating boring, you know, uh, flat food. But definitely incorporate these healthy carbs because they're gonna make you feel more filling and uh, it's healthy food too. You can also eat nuts and seeds that are packed with healthy unsaturated fats and fiber to help your cholesterol levels in check. Um, definitely eat chia seeds. They are packed with omega-3 fatty acids and they also give you a good boost of HDL. And chia seeds are so good. They taste almost like nothing, but I you can definitely eat them in so many different ways. For me personally, my favorite way to eat chia seeds is in chia seed pudding or I add them in my smoothie. I definitely add like a spoonful of chia seed in my smoothie that gives it a nice like thickening, thickening consistency and it's also very fulfilling. Um, and if you don't like chia seeds, no problem. You can also try pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, walnuts. The best way is to add all of these seeds to your um, like salad toppings. Um, you can also, uh, you know, eat blend of almonds or oats. You can also have a uh, pecan, almond, butter to kind of, you know, uh, add flavor to your food like try and mix and match these healthy foods together and and you'll see that flavor come to life depending on your taste buds you know in general food and lifestyle changes will play a key role in maintaining your hdl at a good level if not increasing it and if things are not working in your favor, don't give up. Reach out to your doctor or pharmacist because there are some medications that can boost or lower your HDL cholesterol. Some of the drugs that can be prescribed for uh, improving HDL levels are, uh, you know, niacin, fibrates such as uh, gym fibrozil, and certain statins also help, like, you know, particularly simvastatin and rosuvastatin. Uh, but just remember, there are certain drugs which can actually lower your HDL levels like testosterone and some other anabolic steroids. So if you are uh, taking some of these drugs, then definitely let your pharmacist and doctor know because avoiding these drugs can help increase uh, your HDL numbers. All right, so that concludes my today's video. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions or video suggestions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye. Hey guys, if you found value in this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and remember to subscribe to stay up to date on new weekly videos.